Hey Sky fans, Arkner Admiral here, bringing you something a little bit different to the content I normally have on the channel. Uh, a little video to explain how Cauldron Overlords can use the Sky Vessels to move troops around the board during a game. Uh, so if you're a seasoned Cauldron Overlords player, this might not be the best video for you, but if you're new to Cauldron Overlords, uh, or new to the game, or maybe a, a more experienced player thinking about including Cauldron Overlords in a different faction, either as allies or in a Tempest High Force or a Vizian Defender, something like that, um, then this video might be helpful for you. Uh, so without further ado, let's have a look at uh, how it works. So the first thing you need to know about troop transport for Cauldron Overlords is there's two main types. Uh, which is something that I think a lot of people that uh, when they're thinking about using KO as allies or they first get into the faction don't realize straight away. Um, the first type is garrisoning, where models are basically removed from the table and imagined to be inside a sky vessel. That's focused around the marine keyword and also has the potential to affect the movement speed of a sky vessel or stop it from flying high. The second type is hitching, which is where models are uh, basically imagined to attach to the side of a ship and is based around the hitcher's ability on uh, models' war scrolls and can only be used when the sky vessel flies high. So essentially when the sky vessel flies high, you can take the models with the hitcher's ability off the table and then set them up again next to the sky vessel um so because this is different for different types of models um i think the first thing i do is i take you through basically which models can do which things because um you know some can do get, some can go in a garrison some can hitch um and there aren't any that can do both so the first thing to know is which can do which so if we look at the marine keyword first uh this is basically all of the foot troops for Caradon Overlords. So you have things like your units like Arconaut Company and Grandstock Thunderers, as well as all your foot heroes like the Admiral, the Navigator, the Endrin Master with Endrin Harness, which uh, don't get that confused with the Endrin Master with Dirigible Suit because he doesn't have the Marine keyword. It's, it's only the foot Endrin Master and the Apochemist, as well as also uh, uh, Bjorken Fundric and Fundric's Profiteers, which I haven't pictured, but they uh, also have the marine keyword. Um, you don't see them on the table quite so much. Uh, models uh, and units that have the hitcher's ability are basically all of the units with balloons that aren't ships. So it's your flying troops, essentially. Um, so you have Sky Wardens, Andrew Riggers, the Andrew Master with Dirigible Suit that I mentioned earlier, and Brock Grunson. Um, if you're coming up against a KO army, you're, you're not sure what some of these models are, for instance, Sky Wardens and Andrew Riggers can look very similar on the table, then my advice would be to have a look out for Sky Mines, because that's the easiest way to tell your Sky Wardens and your Andrew Riggers apart. Um, and if not, have a look out for Sky Pikes or Apomatic Swords, because there's always going to be at least one guy in a unit of three or one in three models if they're larger units that have the melee weapons. Um, but when it comes to hitching, it doesn't really matter because they can both do it. Um, so now we've sort of looked at the troops and we've sort of said, right, models with the marine, we've seen which models have the marine keyword and go inside the ships, which ones can hitch, which basically the balloon guys and can you know tag along alongside the ship when it flies high let's have a look at the sky vessels so we start with the the biggest one first and work our way down uh first of all it's the ironclad um which is capable of letting models hitch to it and garrison basically all the sky vessels can let a model hitch to it and it it's not based on the sky vessel whether a model can hitch to it it's based on the the units that i just mentioned previously um from a war scroll ability that they have. Um, the garrison that the Sky Vessel has 
can hold 50 models um, without affecting its movement speed or affecting whether it can fly high and up to 25 in total. Uh, the important thing to know is if you go over 15, then it halves its movement and it can't fly high. So if you have 60 models inside the ironclad, then you can't fly high, which means that then you can't have any models hitch with it because hitching only works with a fly high. It doesn't work with a move. Um, so by taking more models inside the ship, you can take less with it on the outside, essentially. The Ironclad also does have an engine work available to it uh, called the Ebullient Buoyancy Aid, which allows it to carry more models up to 25 inside the garrison and still be able to fly high. Um, but that doesn't affect the penalty to movement speed. So if it has that engine work and has the uh, has 25 models inside it, then it will still be at half movement. Obviously, it's uh, an engine work is like a an artifact of power, so it's only available in Cauldron Overlords Allegiance. So if you're building something like a Tempest Eye Force, then you won't have access to that. Um, and obviously, an Ironclad being 480 points currently means you're not going to be looking at that for inclusion as allies in another faction. Moving down uh, to the frigate, the frigate can also have models hit strip because all the sky passes can. It can carry up to 10 models inside without its movement speed being affected or losing its ability to fly high. And again, like the ironclad, um, if it has more than its lower capacity, its movement is halved. Um, that's just a common thing across all sky vessels. If you go over their, their lower capacity, it's half movement. Um, so yeah, that's the frigate, there's no extra abilities for the frigate to get engine works or something that affect its garrisons or fly high capabilities. Um, and then moving on to the last sky vessel, which is the gun hauler. The gun hauler doesn't natively have a garrison. So normally it can only let models uh, hitch to it. Um, the exception to this is it does have an engine work available to it which allows it to have a garrison of up to five models. Um, and unlike the frigate or the ironclad, um, the number of models inside that gun, haul gun hauler, it, it doesn't affect its movement speed or its capacity to fly high. So it can always fly high. Another note about the sky vessels is their ability to fly high and their movement speed can also be affected by the number of wounds that they've taken during the battle. So if you're relying on moving troops around the board by uh, by flying high, then potentially if you're taking damage, you might not be able to do that. Or if you're thinking, right, well, it's okay if I have 25 models in my ironclad for instance, I don't care if I'm half movement, well, bear in mind that you might be half movement and then your movement speed has also decreased anyway because you've taken wounds um so it might not be the movement speed might not be as high as you're expecting when you're planning out your list the gun hauler is probably going to be your best option if you're looking for allies because it's the cheapest of the sky vessels uh only 130 points currently so to add in a unit that can teleport is a bit of a bargain at that price point and you can add in, say, a unit of six uh, end riggers or sky wardens to hitch around with it. Um, you, if you're looking at something like Tempest Eye, then you can obviously look at any of the sky vessels. Um, but obviously bear in mind that you, you're one in four limit. Uh, OK, so let's have a look at how garrisoning works in a bit more detail. So the first thing to know if you want to garrison your models, how do you get them inside the garrison? Uh, so there's two main ways you can do, do that. One of them happens before the battle, and, one, and the other way is during the battle. So before the battle, when you're deploying models, if the ship is already on the table, then you can deploy units inside the ship. Um, if you have a battalion and then the same battalion, then you can deploy them inside the ship at the same time you deploy the ship but if you don't have a battalion then you need to deploy the ship first and deploying units inside it 
uh, extra drops. During the game, if you want your models to enter a garrison, then you need to do this in the movement phase. And it's instead of making a normal move for those for those models. So uh, there's a few requirements to this. First of all, all of the models in the unit need to be within six inches. Um, that's a slightly unusual wording for Age of Sigma because normally you'd have something like just within or wholly within, but it's all models within six means that, for instance, you can have uh, a couple of you, you can have all of your models sort of just outside, you know, a very small part of their uh, base within six, but you can't snake them all out in a long string and only have one model in range. So effectively, depending on the size of the bases, you, you got a little bit more space than if it was wholly within six. Um, another requirement is if the ship hasn't already moved or flown high in that phase, uh, which is quite important because it means you can't fly the ship or move the ship somewhere to then pick up a unit. The ship already needs to be in that location to pick them up before um, at the start of the movement phase. Um, and the final requirement is that the ship is not within three inches of an enemy unit. So if the ship's in combat, you can't get inside it, basically. Um, it doesn't matter if the unit is within three inches of an enemy unit. So, uh, so now we know how you get into a garrison. Let's talk about when you're inside it. So it's quite good, actually. You get a few different buffs when you're inside a garrison. Uh, first of all, any models inside it are minus one to hit, and they get the benefit of cover. Um, it's important to note that cover doesn't stack. So if the sky vessel is on a terrain piece, the models inside it don't get cover from being in the ship and cover from being on terrain. You either have cover or you don't. And if you have cover, you're, my, you're plus one TSA. Um, and obviously, sky vessels can't get cover anyway. So, but yeah, minus one to hit and cover is pretty good. It makes all of your models inside the ship fairly durable. Um, and it often means that if your ship does get in combat, people will try and attack the ship rather than the models inside it. The uh, actions of the ship don't count for its occupants. Uh, so what that means is if the ship runs, then the models inside it don't count as having run. If the ship retreats and the models inside it don't count as having retreated, if the ship charges, then they don't count as having charged, etc., etc. Um, which is, yeah, that's a, a fairly handy thing. Um, it does mean that in something like Barracks On, where if the ship charges, then you don't get the buffs for the units inside that are triggered by having charged that turn. Um, an important thing about being in the garrison is because your models are not on the table, is how do you measure to them? How can they be affected by things? So for basically everything, when a model is inside a garrison, you measure to the ship and you check visibility to the ship. So if some an enemy unit charges your ship, then they can choose between either attacking the sky vessel or the models inside. And when they do, they just measure you know, the distance for their melee weapons to the ship's base instead. instead. Um, and obviously they can split attacks as well. The same thing happens for shooting attacks. You just measure to the base of the sky vessel from the enemy unit um, and they can shoot the models inside if they want to. And the same for your models inside. You can sit inside the ship and just shoot things, basically. Um, the same thing applies for abilities as well. Uh, importantly, something like Lookout Sir. So if you have a hero inside a ship and there's also a unit inside the ship, then the hero will get Lookout Sir. So there'll be minus one to hit from Lookout Sir and minus one to hit from being inside a sky vessel. So minus two to hit. Um, and the same applies if the hero is inside the ship and the unit is outside the ship and in range, because you're measured to the ship's base from the hero, uh, from the unit, sorry. 
and vice versa if the hero is outside of the ship and there's a unit inside the ship then it will get lookouts her still so that is there's a lot of bonuses to that um but there's also some negatives as well because things like spells with uh where you i don't know a spell like where you pick a point on the battlefield and you it affects all of the models in range of that point you know within so many inches if the ship's in range then every model inside is in range so yeah something like that can be pretty brutal if you've got a lot of models inside your ship um and then the last thing is basically an exception to the uh the rule that i was just saying about which is occupants inside the ship don't count uh, towards the number of models on an objective um so if you fly high and land an iron card with 25 models inside it onto an objective it only counts as one model it doesn't count as 26 you know the 25 models inside and and the ship and that's the same for things like places of arcane power and things where your hero won't count Another important thing about this is the wording, which is that models don't count towards gaining control of objectives. So on some battle plans, you will have additional scoring mechanics. So for instance, total conquest, if a leader is within six inches of an objective and you control it, you get an extra point. So they do count for that. Um, if you control the objective and you have a hero inside a ship, you will get the extra point um but that hero won't count towards the number of models you have um so it's yeah it's just this one little thing where essentially you don't count towards the number of models but you do count for basically everything else so extra points or for ability spells all sorts of things um a few other things to mention about being garrisoned is weapon ranges because you measure it to and from the ship's base um but often you will be wanting to fly high your ship which means you will have to land nine inches away you don't have to fly high you could move the ship um but you, you've got the option to teleport so that's normally often the better option than just moving um some models or units have quite short ranges on their shooting attacks. For instance, Archonauts have a nine inch range on their pistols. So if you fly high and land more than nine inches away, then they're not going to be able to shoot. Um, so while garrisoning is a very good way for moving your troops around the battlefield, um, it's not perfect. There are some restrictions. It's not like you can just drop down a ship and just blast everything off the board with Archonauts, for instance, or, you know, you you might have, it, it's not perfect, basically. Um, so just bear in mind the range of weapons um, that are for the units you're putting inside the ship and how you're going to move the ship. Are you going to fly? Yeah. One last thing that you will want to consider about garrisoning is that there are a large number of war scroll abilities that don't work when either the model using the ability is inside a garrison or potentially they can't target a unit inside a garrison to benefit from the ability. Um, key example of that would be the chemists, uh, a ferric augmentation, which allows a unit to reroll once. That can't be used if the chemist is inside a ship and it can't be used on a unit inside the ship. Another example is the Chemist's Atmospheric Isolation Ability, uh, which affects all models um, in range, within three inches of the Chemist, and they get minus one to hit. And the same with uh, the Fumigators on Thunderers. Uh, neither of those abilities work while inside a Sky Vessel. So there's some trade-offs to being within a ship, effectively. OK, so if we move on to how you get out of a garrison because we've mentioned that there's some trade-offs and we've mentioned that you don't count towards objectives when you're inside the ship so at some point you are going to want to have to get out 
So how do you do that? Well, first of all, you can't get out of a sky vessel if the sky vessel has moved or flown high in that phase. Um, so you can't fly high and then just get out straight away, uh, which basically means that normally you'll be getting out a turn later than when the sky vessel moved. If you combine that with the fact that models can't get inside a sky vessel after it's moved or flown high, then actually you start to realize that troop transport with garrisoning is um, not a very quick process. It can take, uh, if you don't start inside the ship, then it can effectively take a few turns to sort of get the ship to pick them up and move them somewhere and then let them out again. Um, sky vessels are a bit like buses, they're quite slow. Um, what another restriction is that, again, all of the models in the unit have to be within six inches. So again, that's the same as when you get in Sky Vessel, it's all models within, not wholly within or just within. So no snaking out. Um, but again, like in the example I have here, this row of models are only just within. Um, and the models getting out of the Sky Vessel um, have to be set up more than three inches from the enemy, which um, does mean you can do things like this um, in this example where if the sky vessel is in combat you can sort of jump and there's you know not a very large unit there you can jump out on the opposite side of them um but yeah it, the, and there's um yeah so you can jump out on the opposite side of them potentially um obviously if you had a unit with a a large base then you might not be able to or if they were two or three rows deep you might not be able to do that um and then the final thing is that this counts as the units move so you don't get out of the ship and then you know go trotting off somewhere you get out of the ship and that's it you're wherever you put them um there is one exception i want to note which is i said earlier about a sh you can't get out of a ship if it's moved or flown high there is a battalion that called the iron sky attack squadron which basically includes Arconauts and frigates. Um, and in that battalion, Arconauts can get out of a sky vessel from the same battalion, even if the sky vessel has moved. Um, I want to unpack that a little bit because it's something I see people get wrong or debate a little bit. If the sky vessel has flown high, they can't get out because it's only it says that they can get out if the sky vessel has moved. Basically what that ability is saying is that you don't have to adhere to the normal restriction against if the sky vessel has moved, but it doesn't say anything about the restriction on if the sky vessel has flown high. They also can't get into the sky vessel, the sky vessel move and then get out again because getting in counts as their move and getting out counts as their move. So you can't get in and out of a sky vessel on the same turn. Um, so we talked about uh, how to get into a garrison, uh, what happens when you're in a garrison, and then how you get out. Um, there's one other key scenario that you might want to consider, which is what happens if the ship's destroyed and you're inside it? Um, and that is a little bit different to getting out normally. So first of all, you have to roll for each model inside the sky vessel and on, and on a roll of a one, the model is slain. So you obviously you can't just count up the models and say, well, I've got 25 models, so I'm gonna roll 25 dice and however number of ones I get, that's how many models are slain. You need to roll specifically for the models so if you've got a hero, you can just say, right, this dice is for the hero. I'm going to roll for it. Okay. Oh, I've got a one. Now my hero's slain. Um, or if you've got different weapons on the models inside the unit, then you need to be clear about which models you're rolling for um, to know which ones get slain. You don't get to, they don't just take wounds and you get to choose. It's unfortunately just, you know, you roll for the model. Any models that survive that process um, have to be set up 
wholly within three inches of the sky vessel and more than three inches from enemy models. So you get a smaller area that you can set them up in compared to if you were normally getting out of a sky vessel. And you still have that um, more than three inches from enemy models requirement. So you can see in the diagram I've set up here that that space can be quite small. And this is only a small unit of six models attacking the sky vessel. But you can see here how it's already created quite a small space. If you can imagine if this sky vessel had, um, this is a frigate base for scale. So if it had 15 models, you wouldn't get them in. Um, and if these models here were spread out more, then the three inch range would come out more. Um, you know, if they had an inch apart between them, you could very easily end up in a situation where you can't set up those models. And if you can't set them up, I'm sorry, but they're dead. So there is uh, quite a bit of risk there with having models inside your sky vessel. There are some abilities that sky vessels can get, basically the engine works, um, they're called prudency shoots, uh, the frigate and the ironclad both have access to them where you can re-roll the ones that from when you roll for the model for, you know, to see if the model is slain. That's an okay ability, but Obviously, if you're in a situation where the ship gets surrounded and it doesn't even have to be fully surrounded before you run out of space, it doesn't matter if you re-roll that one, because if you don't have anywhere to set it up, you know, it's still not going to uh, not going to survive. Um, so really, you really you want to avoid having your ships get into combat if you've got models inside them. Um, OK, so. I think I've explained garrisoning fairly well now, so let's move on to hitching. Okay, so if we look at how hitching works, which is for uh, basically sky riggers, anything with balloons, um, it's models with the hitches ability that I mentioned earlier. Um, there's some requirements for you to be able to do this. It only works when the sky vessel flies high doesn't work if the sky vessel moves. It's capped at seven models per ship. This uh, is the same for all ships because you're looking at the um, ability on the um, engine riggers or sky wardens or engine master of druid with ball suits um, war scroll. That's where the ability is. So it's um, written on there. So that's why it's the same on all ships. And you can only do it if the uh, Sky riggers are within, uh, wholly within six inches. So that's a slightly different wording to garrisoning. You get a little bit less space there. Um, and the the unit hitching can't have moved earlier that phase. So you can't move your engine master with your dirigible suit or your engine riggers up to the ship and then have the ship fly high and, and then have them go with it. They have to uh, have not moved that phase. Um, and another important thing about this is that any enemy models don't stop it because you're you're not doing a movement. You're just taking your models off the table and setting them up somewhere else. So, for instance, in the example I have here, I've got two units of three uh, engine riggers or scarbons, or well, it's probably less than an inch there, so you could set one unit of six. It doesn't really matter. Um, if I rem if I flew high this sky vessel, then they're wholly within six and the fact that they're within three inches of enemy units doesn't matter. They would still be able to hitch with the sky vessel and it would not count as a retreat. Um, so they're the requirements for doing it. Um, so let's look at how you set them up again afterwards. So you will pick up your sky vessel and you'll say it's flying high. And then you'll also say that the uh, whatever units you've chosen that were wholly within six inches a bit of flying high with it as well they're going to hitch you'll then set up your sky vessel um and then you'll also need to set up your your units that hitch alongside it um because the sky vessel is flying high the sky vessel itself needs to be set up more than nine inches from enemy models and more than one inches from terrain or objectives um and then those two requirements also apply to the hitching unit, so your engine riggers, your sky wardens, 
your entry master got grants in that's one. they all have to be more than nine inches from enemy units more than one inch from terrain or objectives and wholly within six inches of the sky vessel and they can't move if they do this so if you um yeah if you if you fly high and hitch alongside the uh, sky vessel you can't move upwards um the exception to that is in Zilfin, because you can't move um, in the same phase that you've hitched. In Zilfin, you can hitch in the hero phase, because the Sky Vessel can fly high in the hero phase, and then later on you can then move in your movement phase with the uh, Sky Vessel and with the, the models that are hitched, because it's in the same phase that they can't move. Um, a few things to note here is that because you're just setting them up um, outside the ship, then these models don't have any restrictions towards counting towards objectives or anything. So you, know, you can just set them up on an, on an objective potentially and um, have some models on there. Obviously, you have to be more than one inch from the objective, but in most games, it's uh, the objective has a six inch range or a three inch range depending on the battle plan but um yeah the nine inches away from enemy units can potentially zone you out of areas you want to be so for instance in this example the enemy model is quite far away from the objective but you can see it's still taking up half the objective and stop you getting on half of it if at any point the enemy model is within this area of you know, three inches from the center of the objective, you can't land on the objective. It's mathematically impossible if, you know, if they're inside this smaller circle for you to get inside the big circle anywhere. So one model sitting on an objective can stop you flying high onto it or your um, entry figures, sky wardens, that sort of thing from getting onto the objective as well. So they can count towards it, but landing on it is also not quite so easy as you might necessarily think the uh the thing about being one inch from terrain is important to remember it's something that's easy to forget um it's normally quite easy to set up a sky vessel uh, more than one inch from terrain because all terrain has to be set up six inches apart um most spaces are small enough that you can fit them in that gap but then to also fit your entering riggers or your sky wardens where you want them to be um either in front or to the sides of the ship might not be possible. So you have to think about your larger footprint there um, and where you want to go, where you're going to want to be able to put your your end riggers or something. And enemy units can use terrain to their advantage because they not only do they have this large nine inch area around them where you can't go, but then if there's a terrain piece here, for instance, you've got to be then another inch from that as well which can then basically extend that area a little bit. Um, so, yeah, that's that. Yeah, so, okay, so that's essentially how you do it. Um, one of the important things there is that hitching away from enemy units doesn't count as a retreat. That's extremely useful. Again, the nine inch is away is quite important for weapon ranges. Uh, for instance, Sky Wardens have nine inch range pistols, which means if you fly high them with a sky vessel, they're not going to be able to shoot. Um, but engine riggers can. So when you're choosing which units, you if you're thinking, oh, I really want to have my sky vessel fly high around, then and to transport um, my sky riggers, then yep, yeah, you want to maybe choose uh, engine riggers rather than the sky wardens. Um, another thing to think about is you're going to be looking at nine inch charges if you want to uh, use any riggers or sky wardens as a melee unit um, so that's not necessarily going to be uh, very easy to do without something like chronomatic cogs or uh, if you do the the zilfin hero phase move um, yeah so i hope that explains the basics of how it all works um, if you've got any questions feel free to comment below um, I've only done the real basics here in this episode. If you want uh, me to do a video that goes through some of the more niche scenarios or some of the 
you know, the potential FAQ questions or more complex interactions with other units, then let me know. But in the meantime, yeah, I hope this was helpful. Uh, if you like the video, hit like. If you like the channel, uh, hit subscribe. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching.